Hello and welcome to another episode of Sustainability Asia. This is the video series where we speak with colleagues and clients about sustainability and how that affects businesses in the region. My name is Andrew Diggs and I'm a project finance partner at Norton Rose Fulbright in the Singapore office. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Brown to discuss an important sustainability conundrum. And that is that decarbonisation globally is going to cause a massive increase in the demand for electric vehicles over the next decades. And electric vehicles themselves and their batteries use uh, large quantities of refined nickel. However, the process of mining and refining that nickel itself has some pretty important ESG issues, including a large carbon footprint. Steve is an independent consultant focusing on the responsible supply of battery metals, and he previously worked in Indonesia as Vale's general manager for business development. Welcome, Steve. Thanks for having me. So, Steve, can you tell us why is it that EV manufacturers such as Tesla are so concerned about nickel supply? Well, Elon Musk famously called for the nickel mining industry to mine more nickel. And the reason for that um, is that the very best batteries, the high performing EV batteries, uh, are rich in nickel. Uh, so there are other types of batteries for mid-level cars, uh, such as the LFB batteries, and they don't contain any nickel, but the very best ones uh, are predominantly nickel in the cathode. Uh, so this means that as we transition to EVs, there's going to be an exponential increase in the demand for nickel. Um, so today we mostly use nickel for stainless steel, but the EVs will soon change all of that. Um, but this alone isn't really what is the cause of Tesla's nickel pickle, as we call it. Um, if you listen closely to what Musk was saying, he didn't really just call for nickel, but rather he called for responsibly produced nickel. And so what we see in the industry is that Indonesia has been ramping up production of nickel and that's kept nickel more or less in surplus or close to a surplus for many years now. Um, but this surge in production may not necessarily meet Tesla's criteria for responsible production. Right. So, Steve, you've just mentioned responsibly produced nickel. Can you explain a bit more about what you mean by that? Yeah, sure. So the whole point of an EV really is to eliminate the carbon emissions of transport. Um, but of course, there are emissions in the process of making an EV. So these life cycle emissions, as we call them, so they are measured and reported by Tesla and other car manu manufacturers. Um, so when they're looking for nickel, the first thing they'll look for in responsibly produced nickel is nickel with a low carbon footprint. So the lowest carbon nickel is mostly found in North America and probably the next best would be Australia. And sort of out in the middle of the pack and above the middle of the pack is Indonesian nickel, um, which still uses mostly coal-fired power uh, to power the smelters in Indonesia. Um, but that's not all they're looking for. Um, so Tesla also wants to ensure that the nickel is mined in a way that minimizes the impacts to biodiversity so again, the underground mines in North America have a major advantage over say the lateritic nickel mines, which are found in the tropics. Um, so the Indonesian nickel mines, they're all located right in the middle of an area known as Wallacea. It's named after the naturalist, Alfred Russell Wallace. And it's given that special name because it's such a remarkable area for biodiversity. And so that's exactly where all of these nickel mines are located. And, and of course you need to strip off that forest cover to access that nickel. Um, and then that, uh, you know, stripping the forest then leads to water quality issues and that flows into the sea and causes marine biodiversity issues as well. So there's a lot of biodiversity issues associated with the lateritic nickel found in Indonesia. Um, and of course, finally, you know, the governance issues are also important when we talk about responsible nickel. So a company like Tesla will not want to be linked to any sort of scandal, you know, like a corruption scandal. Uh, which could taint the image of their vehicles. So all of these sorts of issues uh, play a part in what we would call responsibly produced nickel. Okay, so where are Tesla and other EV car manufacturers and battery manufacturers going to get this responsibly sourced nickel? Well, so far, Tesla's managed to secure nickel from two, core, two key sources. Um, the first source is uh, Prony Resources, which is a project in New Caledonia. And the second one that they've secured is the BHP Nickel West operation in Australia. 
Um, so both of these mines have a relatively low carbon footprint. Um, and in the case of BHP, uh, they are investing in more renewable energy. So that should bring down their carbon emissions even further. Um, and they have really good governance mechanisms in place uh, to demonstrate that they have good ESG performance. Um, but these nickel sources, so I guess we could call them sort of well-established and documented suppliers. Um, these types of sources are limited in number. And as I mentioned, the real growth uh, which is coming to fuel the future of EVs, it's all coming from Indonesia. And it's coming from mostly from producers who don't really have that long track record of say a BHP. And so these emerging, emerging suppliers of nickel, um, you know, perhaps they have lower levels of transparency in their ESG performance. Um, and so I'm pretty sure that uh, a company like Tesla will be working really hard to establish clear criteria for its nickel suppliers uh, so that the market can be in a position to, so that they can be in a position, let's say, to, to start sourcing their nickel from Indonesia in the near future without really exposing themselves to unnecessary ESG risk. So it sounds like as uh, nickel supply in Indonesia is going to grow massively, uh, there are going to be a fair few changes in the industry there. What are the main changes you see over the next decade or so? Uh, I think larger nickel uh, or larger mining companies, um, they're already doing a lot of public reporting of their ESG performance. But the smaller miners, you know, really don't have the stakeholder pressure to do this yet. But I think that's going to be a big change coming really quickly in the next few years. I think the Indonesian nickel producers will need to publicly disclose all of their carbon emissions. They'll need to disclose their waste disposal practices and they'll have to disclose all of their rehabilitation records. Uh, and then I think once things are out in the open, we'll see a lot of limitations on the sale of metals that have bad ESG performance. Uh, and this will drive significant improvements in the industry. Um, so we're already seeing a lot of action in Indonesian nickel to reduce coal-fired power and increase renewable power. And that's sort of anticipating these changes that are coming. So I think at the end of the day, Indonesia will remain the main source of growth in nickel. Um, even after accounting for all the investments needed to improve ESG performance, I think the Indonesian projects remain the most economically attractive projects in the nickel world, and, and they'll improve their performance over time and, and continue to supply nickel to the world uh, and, and meet the demand for, for EVs, which is growing rapidly now. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Steve, for these uh, great insights into what's a tricky sustainability issue. Thanks a lot. And I hope you can all join us next week for another episode of Sustainability Asia.